Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to show you how to make pressed powders. Now before we start, we do get asked a lot of questions about how to make these pressed powders compared to a loose powder. Can I just simply press the formula and things like that? And I just want to start by explaining it's really not that simple. When you are pressing a powder, not only does the formula matter, but then it depends the pressure that you use to press the powder, and it also depends on the size of the godet that you are pressing into. For example, the formula that I would use to press into this larger godet would be different to the formula I need to press into this little godet. So there's no one way to create a pressed powder, and it also depends on the powder press itself and the amount of pressure that's going to be applied. So in this formula, I'm going to talk you through how to make a pressed powder foundation. I'll also give you the pressure that works for this particular formula and the diameter of the godet I'm using. But if you want to create your own pressed powders using different size godets, you'll need to alter your formula and or pressure to suit the exact godet that you're going to use and the amount of pressure you're going to use during the pressing step. Let me show you how we put it together and I'll also show you pressing the powder so that you can see fully what I mean. First of all, let's make the product. So what I have here is some mica and I have my iron oxides and titanium dioxide. I'm first going to grind these pigments and the mica together to get my powder mixture. Now I'm going to add my colors and that mica to some magnesium stearate. Now one of the big differences between a loose powder and a pressed powder starts pretty much from here. I use a lot more binder in a pressed powder formula so that it will hold together into the compact. This does mean that it will also adhere better to my skin so I will get greater durability from a pressed powder than I would from a loose powder because of the extra binder that gets used. If I use too much binder, I'll end up with glazing in my finished product. If I use too little binder, it will simply flake out of the finished product. So I need to give this a good stir. Now in larger commercial batches, I would use a ribbon blender and I would then spray my oil phase onto my powders while it's being mixed. In small lab batches, we can just drop it into the powder, but we do need to still make sure we get very thorough mixing of the oil phase. Now, in pressed powders, I also use more oil phase. This also helps with the binding and pressing into the compact. Again, too much oil, and I could find that my product will glaze during application and too little oil and I could find that my product flakes out of its packaging as well. So it needs to be a really specific input, also so that it doesn't feel greasy or heavy on the user's skin. We also need to make sure that that oil is mixed through homogeneously. Again, in larger scale production, we use a ribbon blender and we spray the oil onto the powder and this makes it really homogenous and mixes it through really well. If we don't mix this phase properly, we would find we get oily clumps or dots in our finished press powder, which is also not suitable from both a consumer or quality perspective. Now once that's thoroughly mixed, I can add any effects pigments that I choose. And in this formula, I'm making it an instant effects whitening type effect product, but with a nice natural glow to it. So this would be particularly suited to Caucasian and fair Asian skin tones to give it a really beautiful highlighted but glowing effect. And again, stir through until mixed homogeneously. And again, in larger production batches, we'd be using a ribbon blender for this step. 
Now once that's mixed, I can then fill my godet and in large production, a hopper and auger filler would complete this step. And then I need to use my powder press to press it, even in lab. Now this one here I got from Chemwall Engineering. You'd need to contact your powder press supplier. This is only for lab use because it's very manual. In larger production, I would need to get a more automated filler. I simply load this in, position the ribbon, and this gives the product that nice finish to it. Set my pressure and press my powder. And then when pressed, obtain my product, which is this beautiful pressed powder ready for use. So a couple of really important things to note there was the use of more binder and more oil or lipid phase materials to get the inputs just right, not too little, not too much, so that I get a beautifully pressed powder product that won't flake out of the godet, but won't glaze or become oily during application either. It's also really important that you match your formula to the size of the godet and the pressure that you will be applying as well. If you get one of these elements not quite right, the finished product simply won't pack into the godet properly or come out during application for the user nicely for them to enjoy the convenience of the pressed powder product. I hope you enjoyed this video explaining how we make some pressed powders and of course you can contact us for that formula. Just remember it is made to suit this specific godet size and the pressure that I used in this video. Please give the video a thumbs up, please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating!